Folks, we all know that everybody's talking about the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And you could go on Facebook and so, social media and watch amazing things being done, right? But also you got to remember certain people are going to find this ketogenic diet and it's not going to work for them because they entered into this with some type of pathology. They may have low thyroid, low adrenal function. They may have a deficiency in progesterone or testosterone, and then it'll take them longer to fat adapt in the ketogenic diet. So you want to think about this, all you keto gurus out there, when you have somebody that needs help, be patient, go slow with them, because going on the ketogenic diet, it's lonely because everybody around you is eating the wrong way. You may be a little overweight, you may not be socializing as much because you feel bad, and then you go on this ketogenic diet, and then you got to, you know, basically alienate yourself because you don't want to eat in front of anybody because they're going to ask you questions. So, in, in essence, the behavioral aspect of the ketogenic diet can get kind of lonely, but amazing things can happen. And let me l let me break it down for you. Our body, on a cellular level, is able to break down carbohydrates, fats, and protein. Okay, you guys keep seeing me doing this, but it's the best visual. This is a cell. This is the mitochondria. This is how you make energy, okay? This is what we found out. The ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting impact more metabolic pathways than any drug on the market. How about that? The only thing is, is a lot of people are addicted to the carbohydrate, and it's really hard for them to quit the carbohydrates because those carbs elevate serotonin levels, make them feel really good. The book, Potatoes Not Prozac, speaks to this. And even with my clients, I don't put my clients on the ketogenic diet until I balance out their neurotransmitter levels, until I get them feeling better. Because if I add one more stress to some of my clients, now I know I deal with the outliers, I don't want them, I don't want them to go off the edge. So I, I, I balance them out hormonally, I look at their intestinal tract, and then I slowly integrate intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet in, in, into their uh, behavior. But for my clients, I have to go slow. Other folks, we are all biochemically unique. Some people will respond. Some people will fat adapt really quickly. Other ones will take some time. Again, so the keto gurus out there, have patience with these folks. Your way may not be the right way for everybody. Let's break it down. Fat on the ketogenic diet does amazing things. When you keep eating carbohydrates on the cellular level, the mitochondria creates a lot of ROS oxygen radical species, okay? When, when you eat too many carbohydrates, you create a lot of free radical damage. When you go on the ketogenic diet and you fat adapt the right way, your heart and your brain becomes more efficient. And, and that's been proven and, and everybody's talking about that. So understand this, folks. The ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting can do amazing things. If you try this diet and you're flying by the seat of your pants, find a good social media group that can help guide you. You can see what we're doing on the Russ Scali YouTube channel. But keep, keep a food mood diary, okay? Track how you feel, look at the food, because a lot of things people don't realize is there's about 8,000 different foods out there. You could have a food sensitivity to, say, broccoli, believe it or not, or spinach, and you some really good, good vegetables, and, and it could cause problems for you. So if you, if you keep a food mood log and track how you feel every day, it's sort of a pain, but it could help dial in your program.